Welcome to Classic Comedy of Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Ron Ecklebarger. Here we go with the Pepsodent Show, starring Bob Hope. This is episode 214, and it originally aired on February 8th, 1944. Here now is Bob Hope and his special guest, Ginger Rogers. For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day, see your dentist twice a year. Again this week, the Pepsi and Company presents another in a series of broadcasts to our men in the armed forces, wherever they may be. Tonight, for the Marines of Camp Pendleton at Oceanside, California, the Pepsi and Show, starring Bob Hope and his guest of honor, Ginger Rogers. <laughs> Yes, uh, thank you, thank you. I wish I could follow that. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is Bob Camp Pendleton, Marine Base Hope, <laughs> telling you to use Pepsi whenever you get the chance, and your teeth will be as bright and as tight as the back of a sailor's pants. <laughs> Say, well, here I am at the Camp Pendleton Marine Training Base. That's a polite way of saying you may have been the apple of your mother's eye, but you're in the core now. <laughs> Camp Pendleton is about 100 miles from Hollywood as the crow marches. <laughs> he was drafted, too. <laughs> this camp is situated on an old ranch, and it's really not much change from cowhounds to chowhounds. <laughs> and this is an awfully big camp, but the guys are only kidding when they say you have to fly an airplane nonstop to get from the barracks to the front gate. They know darn well you have to land twice to refuel. I, uh, and Camp Pendleton is so big a Marine was AWL in San Francisco And they couldn't say anything to him Because he kept one foot inside the North Gate <laughs> And this camp is divided into areas Area number 24 is for women Marines exclusively Except for paratroopers who land there accidentally No matter <laughs> No matter how hard they pull their parachutes To make them drift the other way They tell their officers and everything is really spread out here, but the Marines don't mind it. There's nothing like getting up in the morning and taking a nice five-mile walk to the place where you're going to start a 20-mile hike. <laughs> but these men are really rugged. They think nothing of 20-mile hikes. They can't. They're too busy thinking about the officers that order them. <laughs> these fellas... These fellas are really proud to be Marines. I won't say they get chesty about it, but I saw one guy standing on a street in Carlsbad, and every time he inhaled, his chest got a ticket for jaywalking. <laughs> I, uh... And these Marines are supposed to be tough, but I shook hands with one, and he couldn't have had a very strong grip because I still have my hand. He even gave me a sack to carry it home in. Yes, sir, these are the boys who are going to put the squeeze on the Japs. And every Saturday night, you can see them in town looking for something to practice on. <laughs> and due to the manpower shortage, they have girl barbers here. And some of these Marines go out with them nights. It's really wonderful to get a chance to trim you two ways. <laughs> I tell you, these lady barbers are wonderful. This is the only place you can get a haircut and give a pint of blood to the Red Cross at the same time. Neglect is using Ethereum. At the corner she'd walk, not a guy would walk. Hello. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Let's go. So, folks, don't be like Miriam. It's a film you feel on your teeth that makes your teeth look dull. Pepsodent toothpaste with irium removes that film, uncovers the natural brightness of your smile. You see, Pepsodent 
and only peptidant contains irium. It loosens film and floats it away quickly, easily, safely. And when film is gone, peptidant toothpaste brings new brightness to your teeth. No wonder more people than ever before use peptidant toothpaste today. No wonder it's number one with men in the service. Try Pepsodent toothpaste for just one week. See if your teeth don't feel cleaner, look brighter. See if it doesn't uncover the natural brilliance of your smile. Get a tube of Pepsodent toothpaste. Remember, Pepsodent, and only Pepsodent, contains Irium. Dear Miriam, sweet Miriam, now she's using Irium. Up and down the street, all the boys repeat. Some smile. Thank you. Some smile. Thank you. So folks, just be like Miriam. Use Iria. For one minute, we switch you to Washington, D.C. for a very important announcement. Today, the National Broadcasting Company, its affiliated station, and the Boy Scouts of America launched a special fourth war loan campaign of their own a campaign designed to aid aid their government in the important task of enlisting millions of Americans who have not yet bought their fourth war loan bond. With seven days remaining in this drive, we have reached 82% of the overall quota with sales of $11,468,000,000. Included in this total, however, are individual sales of $2,906,000,000, which represents but 52% of the individual goal. Important though these huge sums are, the drive cannot succeed without the aid of every individual's participation. You can make these last seven days' reports a stirring cry of support to our fighting men all over the world by buying your extra bonds today. We return you now to Bob Hope at Camp Pendleton, California. And here's Francis Langford.
singing Besame Mucho. Listen to those music lovers. Oh, boy. <laughs> we'll have some of the older types singing next week when Bing Crosby is guessing with us at Santa <laughs> Ana. <laughs> yeah, we'll have old Bing with us. Well, anyway, here we are at Camp Pendleton, Francis. You know, this whole place was once an old Spanish land grant. Yes, Bob, and just think, on this very spot years ago, the Spaniards used to click their castanets. Yeah, and these Marines have kept up to tradition, only they use square ones. <laughs> you know, you know, if a Spaniard walked in here now clicking a castanet, he'd be fated before he reached the front gate. <laughs> only the winners applaud, you notice that? <laughs> Did you notice the women Marines here, Bob? Yeah, these women Marines really went for me. When we arrived this morning, one woman Marine ran up, threw her arms around me, and gave me a great big kiss. Yes, Bob, and it puzzled me. It puzzled you? Yes, I thought your mother was stationed at San Diego. <laughs> yeah, she was in the paratroops down there, but she got caught in a high wind. Professor Colonna tonight. Oh, he's contributing his service to the fourth war loan drive. Oh, and it was getting along so nicely, too. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? 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 What do you know? Drugstore has an echo. <laughs> Tell me, Professor, how are you getting along in your war bond campaign? Great. Hope today I get rid of $60 million worth. Oh, that's unbelievable, Colonna. You sold $60 million worth of war bonds? Oh, you have to sell them? <laughs> Well, where are you now, Colonna? Burlesque show. <laughs> Colonna, what's a burlesque show got to do with bonds? Do you think of anything that draws more interest? <laughs> hey, Hope, I I'm selling war bonds to some girls down here, and this cop is interfering. I never heard of such a thing, Colonna. You're selling war bonds to the girls, and the cop is interfering? What does he say? Wants me to get down off the runway. <laughs> Colonna, you're not fit to talk to an idiot. Well, maybe we can write notes. <laughs> well, Miss Vera Vague. So this is Camp Pendleton. Yes. Yes, Miss Vague, this is where the Marines are turned out. Oh, goodness, and they're probably nice and fresh. I'll take a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> a young coach, you look more like an old 45. Oh, bless your heart. Yeah. I'd brain you if I had a pair of nylons to wear to the trial. Well, how do you like Camp Pendleton, Miss Vane? Oh, I lovely, but I'm mad at the officers and men here, Mr. Hope. I find them very hard to take. You find the officers and men hard to take, Miss Vague? Why? Well, they've got guards here that search at the gate. <laughs> well, well, you must have enjoyed that. <laughs> it just seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> I suppose at one time you did, too. Uh, why? You're hot tonight, aren't you? <laughs> you know, don't you, there's a time and place for everything. There is? Yes, and if you were in yours, you'd be still hotter. <laughs> i hotter than this audience. I knew that would be funny because I tried it on the MP who stopped me at the gate. <laughs> oh. oh, so the MP didn't want to let you in the camp? Uh, no, he didn't. He just kept saying, over my dead body, over my dead body. Well, that's too bad. Oh, I don't know. After all, out of a great big camp like this, who's going to miss one little old MP? <laughs> I'll get a pardon me, Miss Vague. Hello. Hello. Oh, trouble. You know that $8,000 I took in selling war bonds? Three men just took it away from me in an alley. Oh, Colonna, that's terrible. Did you tell the nearest policeman? Yes, but it's no use, Hope. He's losing, too. <laughs> Colonna, 
There's someone on this program who would like to buy a bond from you. Come here at once. Okay. Bologna, how'd you get here so quick? Drank a highball at Garrigan's Cafe. <laughs> Professor, why don't you sell Miss Vague here a $25 war bond? It's only $18.75. She must have $18.75 on her. I'll find out. Hope say, Miss Vague. Oh, yes, Professor. Think of the year you were born. Got it? Yes, I've got it. Got it in cash? Stage. <laughs> you know, I used to think man was descended from apes, but after looking at you, I can see man hasn't quite made it yet. <laughs> oh, well, I can't get mad at you, Professor. You're so cute. You mind if I run my fingers through your mustache? Okay, but don't disturb the rabbits. <laughs> Colonna, why did you put rabbits in your mustache? Gophers got lonesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let you and I get married Just picture it, the two of us living happily in a vine-covered cottage You hurry home from work You're coming up the walk You see me standing in the doorway And tenderly you say Close the door, you're letting the flies <laughs> Ah, but Miss Vague, I, I'll kiss you If it'll sell a bond Oh but uh, I warn you, my kisses are electric. Oh, well, my kisses are electric too, Professor. Kiss me. All right. <laughs> uh, Colonna, what happened? She was AC, I was DC. <laughs> Pepsodent, and only Pepsodent, contains irium. And Pepsodent toothpaste with irium removes film that makes teeth look dull. It loosens film and floats it away quickly, easily, safely. And when film is gone, Pepsodent toothpaste with irium brings new brilliance to your teeth, uncovers the natural brightness of your smile. So get a tube of Pepsodent toothpaste with irium. And remember, Pepsodent toothpaste because only Pepsodent contains irium. Ladies and gentlemen, on March 1st, you'll no longer need to bring in an empty tin tube when you buy a new tube of Pepsodent. That's in effect after March 1st. But before March 1st, your government wants all the empty tubes you've been saving. So look through your medicine chest now. Bring all the empty tubes to your drugstore. Those tubes contain precious tin that may save lives, and you won't need them after March 1st. The Marines are always a sign the toughest, toughest things to take, but tonight we've got something for you that's very easy to take, and here she is. One of Hollywood's top flight stars, currently starring in the Paramount picture Lady in the Dark, Miss Ginger Rogers. And thank you, boys. Well, welcome to the Pepsodent Show, Ginger. It's really a treat to meet the girl who was the lady in the dark. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. But you can unpucker. I'm not turning off any lights while you're around. <laughs> well, I wasn't puckering. I just used starch in my irium. Say, it was nice. <laughs> it was nice of you to come down here tonight, Ginger. Did you have any trouble getting away? Oh, I would have come anyhow, Bob. You know, I'm uh, married to a Marine. These are my boys. <laughs> These are your boys. That's well, you're right. doing better than Crosby. Say, uh... <laughs> so you're married to a Marine, huh? Mm-hmm. How do you like that? Those guys take all the best objectives. <laughs> <laughs> Say, is your husband here in the country, Ginger? Uh, no, Bob. Right now, my husband's somewhere in the South Pacific. Oh, well, tell me more about him. Was he a Marine when you married him? Oh, yes. We got married on one of his leaves. You mean he lost his liberty while he was on it, huh? <laughs> I'll tell you, you couldn't pick anybody better than a Marine to marry, Ginger. Couldn't I? No, they're honest and loyal and brave and... Boy, boy I sound like I'm getting the allotment. <laughs> Say, uh, 
Hey, you come from Texas, don't you, Ginger? Yes, I come from Texas, where men are men and women are women. Yeah, nice arrangement, isn't it? <laughs> you know, there were a couple of parts for handsome men and lady in the dark. I wonder why I wasn't in it. It wasn't that dark. <laughs> Did you see the picture, Bob? I certainly did. What love scenes? They were the most exciting I ever took part in. The love scenes were the most exciting you ever took part in? Why, Bob, you weren't even in the picture. I know. That's what the usher said when he threw me out. <laughs> but you have three leading men in Lady in the Dark, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Ray Milan, Warner Baxter, and John Hall. Well, why don't you ever ask for me? Bob, when you can have caviar, who wants to bother with K-rations? <laughs> Well, I had some for lunch and it didn't bother me at all. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, but tell me, what's Lady in the Dark all about, Ginger? Well, it's a story with a dream in it. Yes, you certainly are. Yeah. <laughs> no, Bob, I I mean it's got lots of dreams in it. Long, beautiful, pleasant dreams. Long, beautiful, pleasant dreams. Who directed it? Ovaltine? <laughs> Uh, I'm a girl who has a mental complex, and I go to a psychiatrist. A what a trist? <laughs> a psychiatrist. Oh, a psychiatrist. Yes. A psychiatrist is a student of human behavior. Well, that's my hobby. I'm a student of human behavior. Yes, but they look at men, too. <laughs> Psychiatrists can, uh, can even explain your dreams, Bob. You know, there's a reason for every dream. Yeah, I know that. Mm -hmm. One of the Marines here kept dreaming all night that he was in Bermuda. And what was it? The guy in the bunk under him had onions for supper. <laughs> but let's... Let's delve in psychiatry, Ginger. You be the lady psychiatrist, and I'll be the Marine in the quandary. Okay, Stan, quandary music. Is that all right, okay, Ginger? Let's okay. Well, here's the office, psychiatrist. <laughs> I like to get examined at Tickles. Well, young man. Are you the psychiatrist? Yes. I'm Dr. Rogers, M.D. M.D.? <laughs> My dish. <laughs> well, I, I kind of like you. Well, I don't affect you that much, do I? No, I always wear my Adam's apple on the outside. <laughs> well, I'm here. I'm ready to have my head examined. Okay, you want to wait, or will you call back for it? Uh, <laughs> here, Ruff, let me, let me look at your head. Mmm, my, my. My, but it has a peculiar shape. And it's so flat. Yeah, my head's the one in front. You're looking at my mess kit. <laughs> well, come on now. Let's, let's get on with your case. Do you sleep night? Nope, can't sleep. Long dreams? Nope, short bunks. <laughs> You really need psychoanalyzing, young man. Tell me, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> but you uh, like girls, don't you? <laughs> well, let me see now. <laughs> you like them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they don't like me. Well, perhaps you're not romantic enough with a girl. Tell me, when the lights are low and there's soft music playing and you two are all alone in the room and all is still... What do you do? Crack my knuckles. <laughs> but why? why? Nobody will crack them for me. <laughs> well, we'd better get on with the examination. Now, um, now I'll test your reflexes. I'll uh, tap your knee with this hammer. I think you've got too much iron in your system. Well, say, do you really think I'm a mental case? Yes, and I think I know what caused it. You've been training too hard. Training too hard? Yes, now you just go to your commanding officer, and I'm sure he'll give you a 30-day leave. Yeah. <laughs> now who's nuts? <laughs> and Ginger Rogers now does a request number for the boys, Shoo Shoo Baby. Take it, Stan Kent. Up and down the avenue 
than you And now he's wearing the navy blue She had a tear in the corner of her eye As he said his last goodbye I just want to say thanks to Major General Joseph Fegan, Captain McCallan, Captain Ford, and Sergeant Moore. All these folks here at Camp Pendleton. And before brushing our teeth for the night, here's Ginger Rogers again. Say, Ginger, mm-hmm. how about a hamburger and a Coke after the show? Mm-hmm. No, Bob, thanks. I've, I've got a date with a fountain pen. I'm writing my husband in the South Pacific. Yeah, well, how about tomorrow night? No, thanks. I'll be writing to my husband. What are you doing after the war? <laughs> Ginger? It's important to write to a man overseas, but you know, overseas, there's something a lot more important than writing letters. What's that? Reading letters. Bob, you're on the beam there. And all of us who can't get behind a grand rifle should get behind a lead pencil and keep in constant touch with those APO and FPO numbers. You know, those Pacific jungles are a long way from Main Street, and the icy Aleutians a long way from the local skating rink. Daydreaming of home so far away from home makes it seem even farther away, but a letter from home, well, brother, when you're overseas and you open that letter, you've got yourself a little chunk of home right there in your hand. You're right, Ginger. And our best to the Marine Women's Reserve on their first anniversary and Uncle Sam's fighting Leathernecks, the best of the best to the best. Good night. Good night. <laughs> another broadcast for the men in the armed forces wherever they may be. Next week, Testament will present Bob Hope with his special guest, Bing Crosby, playing for the Army Air Force at Santa Ana, California. This is Wendell Niles speaking. Thank you. Didn't it stink, huh? Ginger Rogers was born Virginia Catherine McMath in 1911. In 1925, at the tender age of 14, she won a Charleston contest, and it launched her into a career in vaudeville. Only four years later, she debuted in the Broadway production of Top Speed. Soon, George and Ira Gershwin chose her to star in their Broadway production of Girl Crazy. That same year, she began making movies. Ginger Rogers is best known for her partnership with Fred Astaire. They made nine musicals together in the 30s, 
and one in the 40s for a total of 10. She also starred in many non-musical movies like Vivacious Lady with Jimmy Stewart and Bachelor Mother with David Niven. In 1940, she starred in Kitty Foyle, for which she won an Oscar for Best Actress. She continued making films and starring on Broadway and making TV guest appearances until she retired in 1987. The American Film Institute names her number 14 in their list of greatest female stars of the golden age of Hollywood cinema. Ginger Rogers died of a heart attack in 1995 at the age of 83. Please send your questions and comments to host at classiccomedyotr.com. Come back next Wednesday for another episode of The Pepsodent Show starring Bob Hope. And check in on Friday for the next installment of The Life of Riley. Until Friday, in the words of Lawrence J. Peter, A man doesn't know what he knows until he knows what he doesn't know.